the Justice Department puts on a dog and pony show, announcing charges against 13 Chinese spies, eight months after they had shut down their investigation into Chinese spying and intimidation activity in this country. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlburt. Yesterday, the U.S. Attorney General announced indictments of, against 13 Chinese intelligence officers and assets. The charges involved efforts to unlawfully exert influence in the United States for the benefit of the mainland Chinese government. But that does not tell half the story. In fact, this investigation began under President Trump, and this same Attorney General shut it down in February. So why is he talking publicly about this matter today? Maybe because the President's handlers know they need yet another distraction and a way to prove that they run the same red-hot administration they like to pretend they run. But as the Chinese did not succeed, they won't succeed. Before I dive into this, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative Views and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. <laughs> Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts the American eagle with this caption, Eagles fly alone. Pigeons need a flock. How appropriate for today. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, excuse me just a minute. Yeah, you see the new icon, the heart shape with the US dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do. Well, maybe not uh, one, Y-U-A-N. <laughs> now then, let's get into this big showpiece they put on as if they think that outside of their college-bred emoters, there's a single village savant whom they're fooling. Reportage on the Chinese plot and the indictment, unsealed only yesterday, comes from four sources. Attorney General Merrick Garland published his remarks directly on the Justice Department's own site. I've left a link, in the link to that in the description. NPR, Axios, and the Washington Examiner also covered this story. But from the Washington Examiner, not from the other three, comes the most embarrassing revelation. And that's why I've left a link in the description to that story not the ones from Axios or NPR. Three separate cases form the indictment against these 13 Chinese agents and assets. They mainly concern the investigation of a Chinese telecommunications company whose name you might have forgotten by now. It is spelled H-U-A-W-E-I and pronounced Huawei. Huawei makes smartphones and other consumer electronics. Smartphones especially lend themselves beautifully to efforts to spy on their owners. President Trump suspected them of such shenanigans, and that was one motive for his China initiative in 2018. As General Garland's statement makes clear, the Justice Department had good reason to fear such spying by Huawei. Huawei was and is a Chinese spy asset. Another of these three cases involved an operation called Operation Fox Hunt to seek out, kidnap, and un informally extradite Uyghur and other Chinese dissidents taking refuge in the United States. This might also explain why the Chinese are opening police stations in America, with detectives only, of course. Less than two weeks ago, Axios reported that the Federal Communications Commission would ban new sales of Huawei telecommunications equipment. The Messrs. Piffwitz, who shared this with Axios, said the, F the FCC was acting out of national security concerns. Now, yesterday, 
the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York unsealed an indictment of two Chinese intelligence officers. They bribed a U.S. government employee to steal from the U.S. Attorney's Office in that district, quote, the prosecution strategy memo, confidential information regarding witnesses, trial evidence, and potential new charges to be brought against the company, unquote, General Garland. The only problem for those two spies is that they had approached a double agent working for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He gave them phony documents to snare them further. Now, that's one case. In the second case, the government charges four individuals, including three Chinese intel officers, with running a special spy mission. Quote, between 2008 and 2018, the defendants used the cover of a purported Chinese academic institute to target, co-opt, and direct individuals in the United States to further the, P the PRC's intelligence mission. Those directives included attempts to procure technology and equipment from the United States and to have it shipped to China. They also included attempts to stop protected First Amendment activities, protests here in the United States, which would have been embarrassing to the Chinese government. Close quote. And for PRC, read People's Republic of China, the name of the government on the mainland. The third case goes directly to Operation Fox Hunt. The government has charged seven individuals with a multi-year campaign of threats and harassment against a Chinese dissident. Again, I quote, Those activities were part of the PRC's global extra-legal effort known as Operation Fox Hunt. Its purpose is to locate and bring back to China alleged fugitives who have fled to foreign countries, including the United States. The PRC has a history of targeting political dissidents and critics of the government who have sought refuge in other countries. The indictment alleges that the defendants, working at the direction of the government of the PRC, engaged in a campaign of harassment, threats, surveillance, and intimidation aimed at coercing the victim to return to China. We also allege that the defendants threaten and harass the victim's family members, both in the U.S. and in China. The PRC's government forced the victim's nephew to travel from China to the United States to convey the PRC's threats to the victim's son. The defendants threatened the victim, saying that coming back and turning yourself in is the only way out. They showed, up, uh, they showed up at the home of the victim's son in New York. They filed frivolous lawsuits against the victim and his son and said it would be endless misery for the father and son to defend themselves. And they made clear that their harassment would not stop until the victim returned to China. <laughs> Mary Garland obviously has a good speechwriter. I'll give him that. Notice how that statement makes him look like a great hero and leader of the cause of freedom. That's for show and nothing but. Before I get into why, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me 20 years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. 
Uh, whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. So, why did I dismiss that, in, that statement as a showpiece? Because the Washington Examiner sounds a sour note. Again, Donald Trump had started the investigation in 2018. In February of 2022, the Justice Department shut it down. General Garland and Matthew Olson, his deputy for national security concerns, defended that decision at yesterday's press conference. And what is their defense? They shut down the China initiative, they said back in February, because it was racist. In fact, pro-China groups and left-wing uh, left -wing groups had said as much for more than a year. They even called the initiative McCarthyism. Presumably, that's a reference to the investigation of Soviet influence by Senator Joseph McCarthy of Wisconsin and the House Un-American Activities Committee. And yet, says Deputy Olson, quote, In the course of my review, I never saw an indication, not any indication, not that any decision that the Justice Department made was based on bias or prejudice of any kind. This was a concern that I understand and I appreciate that perception, but I didn't see that in any of the cases or any of the decisions that were made. Unquote Matthew Olson. Excuse me, Mr. Olson, you total indefensible con artist. Answer me this in my comment space if you have the ganado fortitude. Why did you shut it down? You don't shut down an investigation of a real danger to your country just because somebody calls it racist. That goes double when that somebody is your target or someone sympathetic to the target and its aims. But that is what Garland and Olson did. You want to know what I think? I think this is just the first possible reason for shutting down an investigation into Chinese spying and intimidation. Someone. Probably, the, probably Joe Biden's hammers is sympathetic to the Chinese Communist Party. More than once has an administration official or someone sympathetic to this administration spoken of how the Chinese can spy on you with absolute impunity. Furthermore, they strike a tone of admiration, if not outright envy, to say nothing of how cozy the Bidens are with the CCP as if the Bidens are their men in Washington. Another reason at which the Washington Examiner drops a hint is that they wanted to spy on someone else. In January, the Justice Department opened an investigation into domestic terrorism, which means criticism of the Biden administration, and more broadly, the World Economic Forum and the United Nations and their agendas. Then in March, the Justice Department opened an investigation into Russian oligarchs. This a month after the Russian Federation lost its special military operation in Ukraine. Well, now you know what the late Ian Fleming said about coincidences, don't you? Haven't I told you that before? But I'll say it again. Once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, and the third time it's enemy action. In any case, the Chinese are actively spying on Americans and on political refugees. But as the broader evidence shows, we cannot trust this administration to oppose that effectively. Yesterday, they put on a dog and pony show. They did it for one reason above all. M-I-D-T-E-R-N-M-S. They know that you're getting ready to vote if you haven't already, so don't let them fool you. Link in the description of the article, to Merrick Garland's statement, to the Washington Examiner's story, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to OurSilverLines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link uh, 
and link to my channel and links to the video I just did the other day about the HUAC investigation and one or two other videos I've done on why the FBI has become your enemy. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.